Good morning. We welcome you in Jesus' name as we come to worship our Lord and Savior today. It's glad to have you here today as we recognize and see that God has truly blessed each and every one of us. And it's great to have these cooler mornings as well. We are a Christian community called to worship and sent to serve, welcoming all to walk with Christ and to grow in faith. And that truly guides everything that we do here today. As we begin our time of worship, let's uh, stand and greet each other this morning. As we gather together today, we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. You may be seated as we join in singing our opening hymn. <laughs> I invite you to stand. God's word tells us, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. 
but if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause for a moment of silent reflection. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Almighty and merciful God, defend your church from all false teaching and error, that your faithful people may confess you to be the only true God and rejoice in your good gifts of life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the scripture readings. The Old Testament reading comes from the book of Isaiah. The vision of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. When men give it to one who can read, saying, read this, He says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot read. And the Lord said, because 
people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men. Therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of the dis their discerning men shall be hidden. Ah, you who hide from the Lord your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, who sees us, who knows us? You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay that the things made should be say of its maker, he did not make me? Or the thing formed say of him who formed it, he has no understanding? Yet it is not a very little while until Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be regarded as a forest. On that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the poor among mankind shall exult in the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading from the book of Ephesians. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and is himself its savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything to their, should submit everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading for today from Mark chapter 7. When the Pharisees gathered to Jesus with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, holding to the traditions of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or his mother, Whatever you, have, you would have gained from me is Corbin, that is, given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And many such things you do. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the children forward for the children's message. Try something with me. You ready? Okay. Everybody take a big breath in. Ready? And hold it. Okay, let it out. That sometimes is tough, isn't it? Yeah. Who um who gives you that breath? Who who God? He gives you that breath. Do you think? There are times in your life when God does something and it makes you go, (gasps) excited, good things, right? And it makes you, it takes your breath away. (gasps) This is something I was given a couple years ago. And yesterday, when I was praying for, for my words for today, this immediately caught my attention. So I knew this was the message that God wanted me to share. It says, life is not measured by the number of breaths we take. So we don't get counted by... All those breaths that we take... Okay, instead, but by the moments that take our breath away. So things that maybe make you go, (gasps) that happen in your life, those things are moments that are counted for your life. Those are moments that God gives you. I can think of one right away for your moms and dads. The moment that you were born, I bet your mom and dad went, because they were so overjoyed. I'm going to show you some pictures on my phone of some things that made me go, some moments. Okay, so first I have me and my mommy. Any time I got to spend with my mommy was great. So I would, mm, those moments. This is me praying with my baton team. When you can get teenagers to stand in a prayer circle in the middle of Disney World, that's a moment that makes you go, This is a moment right here at St. John when one of our students after a musical gave me the biggest hug in the world. Now this was a student that was never, ever going to sing on stage. But that year, his senior year here, his eighth grade year here, he had a lead. That's a moment that makes you go, let's see. How about being in chapel? with all the children. When I get to, when I'm a teacher and I stand up and I'm able to turn and look back at all the children praising God, that's a moment that makes me go, "Mm." let's see, graduates, when they come back to visit you, 
you know you've left a good foundation with them. Let's see, I have a few more. This is when the kindergartners graduate. Then you know you've done a good thing. All the students here at St. John getting together over the years. Time with my daddy. Those moments. Don't ever, here's a word, don't ever take them for granted. They're not always going to be there. Here's this one. There's just something special about children praising God. Me and my doggy, that's a moment for me. I don't have any children of my own, so my doggies were my children. That was a moment. This was a moment that was just recently. I was backstage at Kingdom Bound, and I got to hear in person Cece Winans sing about Jesus. And that's just, mm, that's a moment that makes you, yeah. Let's see. How about this? The children's message. Do you think that's a moment that makes us go? It is. You want to know why? Because when we teach you something or tell you something, we know that you're learning of Jesus. And ultimately, that's the most important thing for us to teach. Don't you think? You know what? Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for those moments that make us lose our breath. Help us to remember those as they come, sometimes far and few in between, and help us to appreciate them and just sit back and enjoy those moments. Thank you. In your name we pray. Thank you, children. As you head back, we are going to continue with our next song, Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts gathered here today be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We continue to look at the letter that Paul wrote to the people in Ephesus, uh, Ephesians, in these final chapters of Ephesians as he's talking about what it means to live a Christian life, to walk in this way, walking in the way of Christ. Again, part of our mission statement that we are to walk with Christ in all that we do and say and all the different aspects of our lives have been changed by what Christ has done for us. So today we're going to continue with that theme. And so just to kind of review the different things that we've talked about already. First, we walk this way that we are eager to maintain the unity and the bond of peace that comes from the Spirit. We are to talk like, well, like Christians, like ones whose lives have been changed and to fill our talk with like the peace it talks about or the love that God has shown to us. Our lives have been changed and our speech will change. And people will notice that as we go about our lives. And to use our time, the God-given gift of time, in a way that gives honor to God and glory to what he has done for us. And we saw really serving our time is seeing those around us. Instead of just seeing time as only ours, we see it as part of the community and being part of the body of Christ. Today... Slightly live for turn on this, but we'll see how this is going to be an important thing as well. We're going to talk about a marriage like this, what it means to walk in this life recognizing the gift of marriage. And that's going to be an important thing for us to focus in on today. But I want to focus in first on this question. How does Christ show his love for us? For each of you and for us as a collective, how does Christ show his love for us? Think about that for a moment. Maybe jot something down. But what are ways in which Christ shows his love for us? I mean, maybe it's kind of those moments of taking your breath away, as we heard in that uh, children's message. Maybe it's just listening to God's word. Maybe it's hearing the love that he shows to us. But how does he show that to each and every one of us? I want that to be in our minds right now as we consider these words that Paul is talking about as he connects our life in Christ with marriage, as he connects the things that Christ has done for us to that kind of wonderful union of marriage that God has created for us. And what's important for us also to recognize is that, well, today is not going to be actually talking about how marriage should work. It's not some principles that we follow for marriage. It's just going to be used as a guide for us to see what Christ has done for us. So let's think now a little bit about marriage today. I mean, how is marriage going today? How is that institution of marriage being upheld in our society or even among ourselves? Many of us probably have in our mind that it maybe isn't going too well. And maybe we can point out some marriages that are really good, but we see many other examples where it's not going so well. And so it's easy for us to kind of go down that road to to think about how marriage is not working. Well, my answer to that initially for us to think about and consider is that marriage is a joining of two people who are sinful human beings. And to expect that everything is going to be perfect misses the whole point since misses that sin is alive and well in this world. Even the best marriages have those moments because of sin. So what is Paul talking about then when he uses this example of marriage, when we recognize that things are not going well for us? Well, I think what we need to do is maybe put aside some of our preconceived notions of things. And in our society today, one of those notions is, well, we focus in on the individual, ourselves. We can call it selfish, but sometimes it's just focusing in on how are things working for us. And when we apply that to marriage, what ends up happening is that, well, when things aren't going well for ourselves, then maybe something's wrong with the marriage. Now, if we take that idea of that, how are things working for ourselves, and apply that to these passages, we get ourselves in trouble. 
Because what we do is we kind of take out some things that are very important in these passages. So, so I want to look again at these Ephesians passages, but maybe colored in the way that we're thinking in our life today in that maybe selfish way. So listen to these passages here with some of this stuff taken out. It says, wives, submit to your husbands, for the husband is the head of the wife. So wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Now, I know this is kind of dangerous territory for me today. I'm standing up here as a man reading this passage, and I know that this causes a little bit of trouble sometimes for people. And we talk about this over and over again of how this is supposed to work. I mean, it's in God's word, right? This is, this is how it works. But remember when I said before that Paul is not laying out here a principles of how to live a married life. Now, Married life is very important and is a gift from God, and he emphasizes that as well. But this is not a class on how to be married. This is actually about Jesus. You see the pieces that are missing from this text here? So wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. And then that final one, now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. What was the missing piece there? Christ. And when you take that out of that equation, it becomes heavy-handed law, and it misses the whole point of what Paul is trying to say here. I mean, it's that age-old question. When you say something about the church, you say something, and you ask a question of people, and you, you, it, you, know, you go to that Sunday school answer, it's Christ, right? Yes, it is. It is in some ways that simple, but it's also that profound. What Paul is doing here, and again, it's not, not to make less of marriage. In fact, it makes more of marriage, but we've got to focus in on Christ first and foremost. And that is vitally important because we also need to recognize that he is talking here to the whole body of Christ. Some are married, some are not. Does that mean those who are not are excluded? No. What he's talking about is giving an example of something beautiful that God gives to us. And we know it's been damaged by sin, but that Christ is the one who changes things. So now think about that in our walk of life. What are the examples that we learn from here and how we can walk in our everyday life, whether it be as husband and wife or just as Christians? Each of us has a responsibility to a bigger picture than just us as individuals. See, that first way I was showing that is really kind of thinking about us as individuals and what are the things we need to do as individuals to maintain marriage or just maintain relationship. But here, Paul draws us out to something bigger. It's about Christ and the community of believers. And that's what we need to focus on here. So, Paul then goes on, and this is where he really draws this out. He says this, and he's talking about that institution of marriage and the profound thing that when a husband and wife come together, he says, this mystery is profound. Now, remember, too, Paul was not married himself, so, so he's speaking of something that he doesn't necessarily fully understand because he's not married himself, but yet he knows that in Christ, this is a wonderful thing. He says, this mystery is profound. And then he goes on to say, say this is what I'm talking about, and I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. So here's what this marriage example is about. It is about Christ and the church. Many places in Scripture draw out this image that the church is the bride and Christ is the bridegroom, showing that wonderful love to each and every one of us, that Christ as that bridegroom comes and shows to his bride, the church, you and me, that beautiful love that he has for us. So think about marriage in this context here of Christ and the church. And now listen to these words, kind of in the middle of our reading today. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water and the word, 
so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. Here Paul says, spends three verses talking about this profound thing of marriage that we see as an example, but how this is Christ and the church and what Christ has done for us. We all are the bride of Christ. And so when he's talking about this, this relationship that husband and wife have and, and you know, the join together as one, so remember that when you think about wives submit, it's actually one. We are one. It's for all of us. As Paul says before, that we all submit to each other in Christ. But here is this profound image of God showing a wonderful love. You know, we have images of you know, taking breath away. A lot of uh, weddings are opportunities to take your breath away. There, there are moments in which it is just beautiful to see that. And here Paul is drawing that attention that think of something even greater of love that Christ shows to the church. So this is how, using this example about marriage, Paul is now building up the church and saying, walk this way. Yes, he's lifting up the institution of marriage. It's not to make that any lesser. In fact, to make it even greater. But it's a part of the community of believers. And it is only able to function as all things of our life are able to function through Christ. So first and foremost, we focus in on Christ. And by doing that, then these other ways that we walk in our life are elevated to wonderful things. So how can walking with Christ impact our marriage and all of our relationships? See, we're all living in a sinful and broken world, all in need of God's forgiveness. And so here's the walking aspect. Here's the action aspect. How can walking with Christ impact our marriages and all of our relationships? That we are built together as the body of Christ. We are the bride of Christ. And his love for us is a tremendous love. So how can that impact how we live out our lives? Something to think about, something to ponder, something to meditate on. To see this wonderful message that God has given to us and an example of his love for us. And so as Paul is encouraging us here, that we are to walk in this way. Walk in the way of Christ. Walk in what he has done for us. And that changes everything in our lives. Amen. We continue now with the gathering of the offering. I invite you to stand as we continue with the prayer of the church. 
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the faithful proclamation of Christ's saving name, that God's people may be strengthened in the true faith and his kingdom extended. Lord, in your mercy. For the holy Christian church throughout the world and for all who confess the name of Christ, that God would guard and defend us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Lord, in your mercy. For this congregation, its mission, and its people, for the ability to meet the needs that arise as we do the work God has given us to do, and for the unity of spirit in the bond of peace, Lord, in your mercy. For the educational institutions of our synod, for our preschools, our day schools, and our high schools, our colleges and universities, and for our seminaries, that those who teach and those who learn in them would be transformed by the wisdom of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. For those who have wandered from the faith, that the Holy Spirit would use us to call them home to the Father. Lord, in your mercy. For the government and all who have been set in positions of leadership, that they may use the authority entrusted to them honorably and for the good of the people. Lord, in your mercy. For all who serve in worthy occupations, professions, arts, and sciences, that God would grant them skill and integrity in the performance of their responsibilities and valued service through their vocations. Lord, in your mercy. For those who suffer from hunger, homelessness, poverty, and unemployment, that God's great mercy and love would preserve and relieve them. Lord, in your mercy. For all the faithful, that the Spirit would lead them to cheerful, generous giving from the bounty the Lord provides, to support the church and to help those in need. Lord, in your mercy. For those who are grieving, Lord, we continue to pray for the family and friends of Luke, the family and friends of Joyce, and the family and friends of Donald. And for those who are sick, we pray for Kim and Bill, for John and April, for Diana, for Rosie, for Betty, for Pastor York, for Renata, for Heidi Sue, for Deborah, for Michelle, for Karen, for Maria, for Mary, for Don, and for Daniel. That you would grant healing to their bodies and strength to bear their infirmities with patience and grace. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated. We're glad that you worship with us today. If you're joining us online, we continue in that ministry of worship, that important part of our life where we hear God's word and his love for us and we respond out of praise for what he is and what he means to each of us. And so we continue in that ministry of worship both on Sundays and on Wednesdays. We also, if you have prayer requests or other concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to us, multiple ways in which you can reach out to us. Um, If you haven't noticed already, our website has been updated. It's kind of a new website and and different um, you know, graphics, different uh, menu and everything to it. There's still some kinks and still some bugs in it, but we're working many of those things out. But we hope that it's going to be a good tool to kind of reach out to our community, but also be of assistance to you as well. So check that out. We also send out a a Friday uh, newsletter, or it's in a print form that you can pick up when you come and visit with us. Also, thank you for the gifts that you give. God truly blesses those uh, gifts and uses them to further um, our ministry here at St. John. 
Coming up this Thursday, the 29th, from 6 to 8, we're having a kind of a prayer walk within the school building, within the, actually the whole church building. And the idea of that is as people come, that they can go to each of the individual classrooms and pray for the teachers and the students and walk around the building and all the different places where we have activity during our school. And at the end of that time, about 7.45, we'll meet here in the church to have a kind of a joint time of prayer, though it is a come and go as, as works for you. So, so it's an opportunity then to uh, kind of you know, set the year on a good path as we uh, pray for the coming year. Two days before that, we have uh, Meet the Teacher Night for the parents that are going to come and learn all the different things for the school year. And then on Wednesday will be the students that are going to come and bring their supplies and everything. So it's going to be kind of an active uh, next couple days in this week because then the week after, our school begins. And so we're excited about that. So, but we really invite you to come to that uh, prayer uh, walk. Also, our church picnic is coming up. Church and school picnic is coming up on September 22nd. Worship is changing to 10 a.m. that day, so then right after that, we can go right into the picnic, so please note that. It's going to be uh, a large crowd because it's going to be our church family and our school family all together, and so we're excited about that. We do need some assistance with that, so in the back are some sign-up sheets for uh, food. If you want to bring some food for that, uh, just sign up saying that you're coming so that we know numbers with that, or also volunteer with helping with cleanup and, and setup and all those type of things. Those are back there as well. One other way that you can help out with this is to help uh, defray some of the costs with that if you want to financially give to that. Uh, I believe we'll have um, something in the back there that you can uh, do that as well. But that's coming up September 22nd, so about a, about a month away, and so we're excited about that. Also, we continue uh, in raising funds for our national youth gathering and our team of 18 and a couple different churches. So if you uh, would like to help out with that, there is um, um, kind of a yellow um, trifold type thing out there. You can check that out. Um, we'll have more things as, as uh, the months go on to tell you more about uh, the youth gathering because that'll be next July. But if you'd like to support that, we would greatly appreciate that. Okay, any other announcements in regards to our life together? John. Okay, so it might have been a little bit hard to hear, but it basically it was thank you for the men's picnic yesterday and all those who helped with that, and, and it was a great event. Probably about 25, maybe 30 um, uh, men and, and um, um, boys that came to that event, and there's some extra food, so if you want some of that, that'd be great. I hear the ladies' uh, luncheon went really well yesterday as well, so that's great for those two uh, activities that we um, had that went really well. Any other announcements? So I have one other one for my, myself. I'm not going to be greeting you at the back because I'm going to be heading over to St. Mark. I do that occasionally to kind of fill in with that, but this one's kind of a special one today, kind of a bittersweet one. Um, Pastor uh, Keith is retiring, and so I'll be part of that worship service uh, today. But they actually have their... Um, and, uh, based on the name. I think it's Keating, um, but I mean, don't quote me on that. I may be wrong. will be installed actually next weekend, so, um, so we're excited for St. Mark and that, and that possibility, but that's where I'm going. If you don't see me this morning, I'm heading over to St. Mark to be part of those services as we uh, a bid a farewell for uh, Pastor Keith at St. Mark. With that, let's uh, stand as we're going to say our guiding statement together and then sing our closing hymn. So let's speak together. We are a Christian community called to worship, and sent to serve, welcoming all to walk with Christ and grow in faith. And a blessed day to you as we sing together, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Mm -hmm.